this is for you if you struggle with visibility, with showing up. And by visibility, I mean showing up on camera if you want to, if you're doing social media, TikTok, um, Instagram, Facebook, lives, things like that. If you're struggling to come on video, if you're struggling to start a podcast because you're worried about you know, what you're going to say, how you're going to say it, whether what you have to say is good enough. If you're worried about collabs, so if you're worried about being a guest on other people's podcasts, if you've never even thought about it or thought to apply or thought that you have something good to say or that you would be confident enough, if you struggle about collaborating with other people on, you know, doing live interviews with them or all kind of stuff that we can, you know, collaborate with one another. If you're struggling with all of that, this is for you. I struggle with it too. And I found something, a little pep talk that I tell myself that I know would help you too. Because it's just, it's, it's shifting the focus on what actually matters. And I didn't come up with this by myself. It was through listening to more people in these positions, people on podcasts, people on lives, people doing it the way I would probably do it, but I was afraid to do it. As in not doing it perfectly, as in stumbling upon their words or talking too fast or changing topic or saying something that I could tell they're going to come off that call and say, I wish I didn't say that. Like maybe I shouldn't have said it that way, the same way I do it. And the, the good about that is that it kind of makes you realize that just because you have those fears or, you know, they might be super valid. Like you may come onto a podcast and, you know, maybe talk a little bit over the host, not intentionally that because you're trying to be rude because you get a bit excited or um, there's many reasons. Like, I mean, uh, being neurodivergent and things like that is a big reason why um, a lot of people over talk without realizing that we're over talking over people and all kind of stuff like that. So there's just a like a, a, a bunch of reasons for it. But here's the thing, in spite of anything that we may be thinking inside that that's the reason why I can't do that, there is on this beautiful earth filled with people and this amazing internet that connects us all so easily, there is evidence of millions upon millions upon millions, and at least if you find two, three, it will be enough for you, of people that are so similar to you, that are having the same blocks, fears, limitations, depending on perspective, it's a limitation, or just whatever you're feeling like this is the reason why, and they're doing it anyway, and they're being themselves, and they're achieving their goals. So, you know, we're entrepreneurs here, right? Most of us, what we are here to do is build our business. We have something to say. We have a product to sell. We have a program. We have a course. We have a service. We have something to help somebody with. And that's our business. That's our goal. If we sell it, we help others. And if we sell it, we also help ourselves, right? So that's kind of how how we operate here at the Free, Happy and Driving Online Business and Marketing Podcast, right? So, um for us, it's about finding one or two, like, now it's about finding, because really that's not the pep talk, but I think that if you find, and I'm hoping that this, if you stumble upon this, if you're listening to this, if you're watching this, because it snippets of feet or maybe the whole thing, I'm, I'm filming it on my screen, on my phone too, so it may, it may go on Instagram too. Well, it will go on Instagram as a full episode or maybe parts, but essentially, Hopefully listening to this and just see me not doing but I don't I'm not I've not got scripts. There's just there's no scripts here. There's just my to-do list under my ring light and I had to take off my cover because so it fits in my thing and there's just my coffee that I finished and I, I like it's unscripted. It's not going to go perfectly. My hair is not perfect. It was in a bun, it's not perfectly brushed. I'm not like you know, I'm in PJs. <laughs> it's not PJs, but like I wear these clothes as PJs now. But what I'm saying is there was a time when I thought you need a video crew or to be fully done or to be, there's just, there's a time where I thought all kinds of things. 
And maybe you're thinking all kinds of things. Maybe you think you need to train more to be in front of the camera. Maybe you need to have more equipment. Maybe like it doesn't. Like if I didn't have this ring light right in front of me to the side is a window and I can sit in front of the window. And probably if I did that, it would have been far better light anyway. Um, so, you know, natural light is the best ring light. Um, but what I'm saying is that whatever we're feeling, the truth is there is evidence that someone has that feeling limit thing that you think is the reason why you can't go out there and be visible and build your brand and sell your stuff and build your business. They are having that and they are being visible and they are selling their, their, their stuff and they are building their business. And here's keynote. You don't need to do everything. If you are the person that doesn't want to be on camera because you don't enjoy being on camera, there are so many other ways to build your business. You don't have to be on camera. It's more about feeling in your heart that you want to do something. So if you're feeling in your heart, I want to be on, I want to be filming my own reels I, or I want to be on podcast interviews or I want to write blogs or write whatever it may be for you. One, two, three, however many. And then you're followed but with but. I'm not ready because I don't, you know, I don't look how I want to look to be on camera. I don't feel I'm an expert enough to be on podcast interviews. I don't feel my audience is big enough. I don't feel that um, I have a good backdrop to my house. I don't feel like, um, and just like a lot of things, right? If that's what's happening, this is for you, right? <laughs> I kind of gave you the juiciest part already by you know, inspiring you to find people that are having those butts. <laughs> I'm putting quotation marks for those listening in, <laughs> um, you know, and, and doing it anyway and feel inspired by that and motivated and pushed to decide that there isn't a perfect way and the way that you are is enough. But <laughs> here's a but that I think counts. You have to do it. You actually have to do it. So it's the action that's what you need to get there. So when you think, but when I will have a you know good backdrop to my house or a professional microphone or this or that, all of those things that you're doing, in fact, it is more detrimental for you to wait to have the perfect tools because you'll give your power away to constantly feeling that those are the tools. And I, I share this with you. Not because I've always been this way. I've been an entrepreneur since 2012. I'm doing today some things that I had ideas for back in 2012. Because back in 2012, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, I didn't think I had good enough equipment, good enough backdrop, this, this, this. So I know the struggle. I live the struggle. I'm just not, I'm not one of those entrepreneurs that have just popped on the internet and everything came natural to me. Nothing wrong with that. And I don't, I don't think anybody has everything natural, but you know, in this realm of what we're talking now, I had a lot. I've spent a lot of time rethinking my pictures and my drop backdrops and my camera, my words and deleting and all the things. And if you're that, I hope that just me being raw and telling you this story is inspiring you. I have an online business. I work full time in it, makes a full time income. I'm home with my children. I'm flexible location time. I can travel. I can homeschool. It has achieved my dreams and I'm still constantly reaching for more. It is possible even if like it's not, I don't think it's a matter of, I used to think that it's it has to be a full mindset fix. Here's the thing. The more we speak confidently over ourselves and, 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 and do all these things and think all these positive things and feel empowered and are able to sort through what's a limitation and what's really a problem or what's not a problem or just a problem in our heads, like, you know, a bad microphone is not the reason not to start a podcast. It will just be your quality won't sound as good, but it won't, like, if you're saying good stuff, like, we, you know, our phones right now are such good quality. Like, it's it's good enough. Like, there are very, very successful, impactful entrepreneurs that are just filming on their cameras, on their phones, and at a big distance, and the sound is a bit broken. 
and we're still listening to them because we're getting value. So, you know, that's it. But the key denominator, the one that you cannot live without, you may not have the perfect equipment, the perfect, you know, mindset, and you've gone, you figured it all out. But the key de de denominator in all of this, the key thing that you cannot do without is action. The, the bottom line is that you can be successful in your podcast, in your interviews, in your Instagram, in your emails, in your blog, if you do it. And you may not have whatever your list is, but it can still be successful and achieve your goals, which very likely in this case are visibility, putting your brand out there so that you attract your dream people. So you sell your stuff, so you help them with it and you help yourself by making money in your business, doing what you love, achieving the freedom, the money, the time and all the things. And it goes in that circle of you impact positively, it impacts you positively and so forth. And that branding and visibility is what you're putting out there it's how you're putting yourself out there. So we know about you, right? So your people can find you and you can find them. But if you don't do it, there's nothing that can come out of it. Again, you can have a very successful podcast with a broken microphone or no professional microphone, doing it on your phone or on your laptop. The laptop I'm recording on now, you guys, just, just as a side note, I do have a professional microphone I bought about two years ago, I think, or a year and a half ago. Not like the perfect podcast setup, and I always want like the earphones and things, the headphones and stuff, and I, I might do, uh, I might get it, but um, the laptop I'm with now, right now that I'm about to upgrade is from 2000, and I think I got it in, yeah, I got it in probably 2015, it's 2023. I've heard people that don't start their business because they don't have a good laptop. And I could have bought a new laptop for a long time, but I guess I just went more on holiday and <laughs> did other stuff. It worked. It's not working as fast right now. It's annoying me. I'll get a new one. But like, it just like what I'm saying is that it's, it's not changed how much money I've made on my business. Now I'm feeling like it's slowing down and I can't do my tasks as time efficiently as I like to. So yeah, I need a new one. I didn't feel I needed a new one before, but even if I like, I, you know, I didn't have enough space to do my video editing. So I had to get creative. So I had, I got creative. Like what I'm saying is that action is the denominator. If I said I do not have a new laptop, so I can't take this new client or I can't take video editing pro program um, projects. Um, so I'm a marketing consultant in my service business. And in one of my projects, my, my main client, I pretty much manage the 360 marketing. So it's everything. It's the social media, it's the ads, it's the strategy, it's the lead generation, it's all of the things, including things like, you know, helping with editing on like YouTube videos and stuff like that, that we're putting on our pages and stuff. Um, and now Diana, who you guys uh, know in my team for a while now, she's been doing all the amazing one. But for a long time, I was doing it too. And my laptop wasn't a video editor's laptop. Neither my professional video editor. Many times with my clients, we actually hire professional video editors for our professional videos. But if I'm putting, compiling something quickly for social media or a landing page, trust me, I'll get my, what do I use? iMovie? And I'll get it done. I'll delete an app on my phone and on my on my laptop and download it again and I'll get it done. I guess what I'm saying is that there are ways in which things can be better, but those things are not if they're not done. So I could have a lot more storage on my phone to edit videos, but the only way I actually needed that and actually had is if I continue working with clients and didn't let technology or anything else limit me and found a way. So what I want to inspire you is to give yourself this pep talk that I give myself every time I do something that is that I my in my head, I'm like, it could have been done better. I could have had this. I could have had better equipment. I could have had this. Again, I repeat, this is the person that like, has deleted videos, has deleted social media accounts, has deleted websites over the course of the last 11 years at this point of recording of my career. Yet, the more I implemented that, and I would say right now I'm pretty much full steam in this mindset, the more I realized that the power was never in the perfect thing, in how perfectly slow and you know, I speak so you can understand every word or um, 
how I said the perfect thing and how I had the perfect the software. Like I, again, coming back to the random storage video, I have created videos for myself and my clients that have generated that impact. Like I'm not, I'm, I'm not really tracking what videos do, but as a lead generation marketing strategy, I track, I track and we, you know, we, we generate millions through the marketing and they all work together for good. And I didn't let something like storage or a microphone or something limit me. And that attitude is what helped me the most. The times when I overthought things in my career, the times when I indeed and stopped uh, because, you know, I didn't have the, the perfect whatever, that didn't help me or anyone. When you unleash yourself, like, you know, when you allow yourself to really say the I did it. So here's the prep talk. Here's the prep talk. We are about 15 minutes in. Every single time I go on a podcast episode, I do something and I come off and think that could have been easier or I could have done it better. I say to myself, but I did it. If I didn't do it, I wouldn't have learned anything. I wouldn't have had at all the opportunity to do it better. So yes, I could have done this better, said this better, or done it easier, or had this thing and that thing, but I did it. So when I go on podcasts again, things like that, I often come off and say, oh, should I have said that? Or oh, I should have said more I should have done that I should have had a better background I should have prepared more I would and then I say to myself but you did it and I have mastered this I think over the past two years or so and I hope I help you with this if that's not where you're at to let it go then I just let it go repeat this kind thing to myself that I would say to my children that I would say to my husband that I would say to my mother that I would say to my friends that I would say to my clients that I would say to my students that you done it and there's no other way to get there than to do it you did the most important thing you showed up when I you know I did a cool video on my, when I was editing a lot of videos on my small laptop um, and it would take me 10 hours and I'd feel like this should have taken three, right? Because if I didn't spend three hours, you know, emptying my, my laptop, but then like, but I did it. I did this. I achieved this. I put this video out. We got these results. We got these conversions. We got the sales. I helped my clients. I made the money. I did the thing and nothing like I'm resourceful like i'm not defined by the tech that i own or the perfection of the skills that i achieved i'm defined by the fact that i am all use moving forward i am unstoppable because i'm not stopping <laughs> not because i'm perfect not because i have it all but because I'm not stopping. So I will show on the podcast. I will show up on the interviews. I will do my thing. I will do it because I will do the action and I will put the growth in your action. And I, I tell you this again, I, as I said to you, 11 years thus far in my career, I haven't done this for a long time in my career as intentionally. And I look back at, you know, also, as a mom now of two um, children, four and two now, and how busy life is, sometimes I remember the 2012 and 13 and 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, until I had children, just the extra time I had. <laughs> and I remember the beautiful websites I built and then took them down because I didn't think they're perfect. Why did I take them down? Why didn't I just do more on it and more on it? Because I had this thought of perfection you know I will start an account that was focused I remember it was called bright content solutions and then I was like no because now I want to offer marketing as well delete the account start a brand new thing called you know marketing consultant like why not just rebrand that one and leave all the evidence behind and go on like you see what I mean like so if you are the person also wondering this like should I have two Instagram accounts should I I encourage you to think this it's not about that really even even the whole outside of visibility the whole of business whole of life <laughs> let's take it wider it's about action it's about moving forward and when we focus on that here's the thing like as a mom now i've learned how important it is to when my children do something great 
I'm reading all these nice books that I'm enjoying about parenting, you know, having conversations in our family, you know, you people I love, respect that, advise me great on this. And it's the idea of not focusing too much on saying, you know, for instance, both of my boys are so into maths. They love their maths. I mean, you know, my eldest is, my goodness, <laughs> surpassed us in his equations. It's clearly a passion, clearly a gift. And, and my two-year-old too, I mean, like it's just such something he loves. So I'm learning that it's more important to me than to say, oh my goodness, you're so smart, you're, which I did. But I'm learning that it's more important to say, I love that you love this. I love that you enjoy numbers and that you are doing it because you love it i love the effort you put in this i love how you put this blocks here and colors here and it so that oh my light is going why is my light going i don't know i don't know for those of you that are watching on video on the podcast you'll be like what's that <laughs> my kind of light is going down my ring light so i've learned that it's more important to appreciate the progress because you know they may never, they may not always get right, you know, the uh, times table. They might not always get that. And I don't want them to put their worth and their love for numbers in getting it perfect. But rather than doing it, right? Because what is going to help them make something out of this talent and gift and passion in their life? Working on it. So if I only focus on when they get the correct answer and, and, Every time they get it wrong, because of course they get it wrong, especially because they love numbers. So all day, every day, they count numbers. And sometimes it's right and sometimes it's wrong. But if I focus on that, it might put them off when they get it wrong, when they get the times table or the addition or the counting wrong. But if we focus on the fact that, wow, we love numbers, let's do more and more and see what else we can discover and do. I'm certain that that's going to allow them to follow the passion and follow whatever that takes them. So the same for us, right? In business, if we focus on, did I say the perfect thing on the podcast? Are my videos looking perfect? And another side note, are my content pillars on Instagram perfect? Are my, like, it can paralyze you. As a marketer, I do content pillars for my clients. That's my job to do for them. I can tell you that I know all things in and out of content pillars. I'm always training on it too, but it paralyzed me in my own visibility. And I had to ask myself, why am I showing on and off on my social media? That's because I'm paralyzing myself with the concept of content pillars. Some days it will be the perfect content pillars, which they are some days. And some days it's just me showing up. And that's the thing. That, but the, the true progression is not in the perfect posts. It's not in the perfect things. It's in the doing of it. I promise you that if you commit to whatever your goal is, let's say you want to be more visible on being interviewed on other podcasts. That's one of my goals now for my visibility um, strategy. If your goal is to start your own podcast, is your, your goal is to speak more to your email list, if your goal is to show more on social media and you actually do it before you feel you're doing it the way you wish you could, and you consider that it would be the good way, and you keep on, keep on, keep on, keep on doing it, you will guaranteed see progress. And guaranteed, you have to be intentional as well and sell, see sales, as long as you sell, <laughs> as long as you sell, <laughs> and drive things back to your email list. So that's what I said. That's the pep talk. You go on, you, you, you come on live, do an Instagram live, or you come on a podcast, you get it. You're, you're probably going to mess it up. Just accept it. Like I, I, I start my introductions by saying, I'm nervous. I'm probably going to mess this up. That's it. I put it out. <laughs> so we won't laugh it off. <laughs> then as I come off, I think, oh, I should have said that differently. And I say, yeah, yeah, but you did it. That was the most important thing. Literally, it feels from like tightness and like, oh, kind of like in my chest to, yeah, I feel so good. I'm so proud that I showed up. That's it. That's the pep talk. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope you enjoyed this honesty and the video format that you're watching it in it, in you're watching it in. If you enjoyed this, it would mean the world to me if you let me know. So how you can let me know, you always get an email with this episode so if you're on the email list and if you're not wherever you're watching this somewhere there will be a link with a freebie that will be that's very likely 
a uh, the PDF funnel guide that I have live at the moment, or the, they'll just I will always create some super amazing stuff that I well I think are amazing and helpful to you. And I have a free offer. When you opt in that free offer, you join an email list. And then I send you these episodes and lots of stuff that I only send on the email list, which is actually where I where I talk most, where I where I give the most to my audience. That's where I am actively uh, all the time. Uh, that's my inner circle. <laughs> uh, so um, you can join there and you can let me know. You can drop me an email or, of course, if you're on social media, I'm at, at the Georgiana da Costa. Um, there's like links everywhere watching this. And you can just send me a DM and let me know. Or if you share it, I'll share it back. Or you share it back, give you a big shout out and thank you. It would mean the world if you can leave a... Um, review i think on apple you can leave a, a review and you can rate the show that would be so helpful so anyway if you if you if you if this helped you and you feel like sending love back it would mean the world like it wouldn't go unnoticed so thank you so much i appreciate you for being a listener and i'll speak to you in the next episode we've got lots of great interviews lined up i've already filmed some and i've got some booked in now as you guys know it's also a video podcast today we filmed in um in like i, I filmed just on my phone so it's not going to be the landscape thing, but um, we'll still put this everywhere on YouTube, on all the pla podcast flam pla pl pl platforms. So thank you for being here and speak to you in the next episode. Bye. If you've been doing a lot for your visibility, you've been showing up in all the places, you've been you know, posting on reels, you've been maybe doing a guest interviews and maybe a podcast, maybe a blog, and you're not getting the results, you're likely doing three mistakes that are very simple and very easy to make that are not turning those efforts into people in your world, people in your audience, sales and progress. I'm hosting a free training and it's going to be available live and it, there's going to be a replay. You can join, use the link <laughs> that I'm sharing and get for free this super quick, fast training where I show you the three mistakes you're likely making in your visibility efforts, how to fix them straight away. Like this is not something like you have to work a lot to. It's an easy either change in what you say or change in where you send them. And that's it. You'll get more results. For sure.